I want to talk to you today about baptism. This is a second part of a three-part sermon series entitled The ABCs of the Bible. There's many doctrines and principles in the Bible that are misinterpreted and misunderstood by the Christian church. So the aim of these three sermons is to give you the Christian more clarity about the word of God, the word of truth. Last week we spoke about A. Anybody remember what A stood for? Administration, yeah. The different administrations or dispensations of the Bible. We recognize that the Bible is in fact divided into two sections. Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament started, do you remember in what chapter? Exodus 19. And it ended at the end of the Gospel. The New Testament began from Acts onwards. And also we recognize that both Testaments were written and made with God to the Jews. It was only halfway during the mid, uh, middle of Acts where God changed his plan and moved that purpose and dispensation over to the church, the Christian church. Not only are the two divisions, Old and New Testament, but we also spoke about the different dispensations. We understood that, we understood that God deals with different people at different times. He gives specific instructions to specific people at a specific time for a specific purpose. And those times and ages are called dispensations or administration. Today we're going to be looking at baptisms. One of the widest divergence in Christendom has to be the subject of baptism. Christians and churches are divided about how we should baptize, who should baptize, and what's the purpose of baptism. And I believe that we're overlooking the most important question. The question is not whether baptism is in the Bible, because it is in the Bible. The question is not how we should baptize or who should baptize. The primary question that we should be asking ourselves is, should we be practicing water baptism today in the church? Most Christians agree that the, church, uh, the Bible definitely talks about water baptism. Most Christians will agree that uh, when you say you go through a process of baptism, and that will be full immersion in a body of water, and you'll come up, and then you'll be baptized with water. Other Christians who have studied the Word of God a bit more understand that there's also a spirit baptism. Many Christians believe also that not only are you uh, saved by the baptism of water, but you're also saved by the spirit baptism. That can be after you saved when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and it's called the spirit baptism. So most Christians agree that there are two baptisms, those two I've just mentioned. What if I told you that that was wrong? What if I told you that there were actually 12 different baptisms in the Bible? Twelve different individual unique baptisms. Seven of them are spiritual or figurative, and five of them have to do with water. So let me quickly show you what those are. The seven ones are these. These are seven figurative or spiritual baptisms. The first one is Christ baptizing with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, Pentecost. Jesus Christ was a baptizer. He was baptized in believers with the Holy Spirit of power. They went around doing miraculous signs and wonders. The second one is Christ baptizing with fire. <coughs> Scholars are a bit divided about what this actually means. It could refer to Pentecost, because at Pentecost the tongues of fire came upon the head. It could also refer, refer to the baptism of the final heavens and earth where God will renovate the earth by fire. They also may be called that a baptism of fire. These are spiritual figurative. The third one is the Holy Spirit baptizing believers into the body of Christ. I told you now at the membership that when we become saved, the Holy Spirit is a baptizer. And he baptizes believers into the body of Christ. For Christ's baptism into death upon the cross. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, it was a form of baptism. He was fully immersed in his death and he rose to life again, showing the baptism and coming out of the waters. Figurative. Uh, number five is the typical baptism of Noah's Ark. This is also a figurative, a metaphor. Just as Noah and his family were in the Ark, being baptized by the waters, you and I as Christians are in the body of Christ and we are baptized spiritually by His Holy Spirit. Just a metaphor, a spiritual baptism. Six, the baptism of the children of Israel unto Moses. This is also to do with Moses and Israelites leaving Egypt. As we were wondering in the desert, it was just as you and I are baptized into the body of Christ, so the spiritual baptism was the people of Israel were figuratively baptized into Moses. And then the, the, the last one is the baptism for the dead. Has anybody ever heard of that before? It's one of the most disputed verses in the Bible because nobody knows what it's about. Not even me, and that's saying something. I'm only kidding. Nobody knows what this is about. It's only mentioned once in the Bible and there's nothing about it. So we can't even assume, we can't even speculate what this means. Some people say it's probably a faulty translation. 
of the original languages because we really just don't know what this baptism of the dead is. We cannot base a doctrine based on one isolated verse. And then if we go to the five water baptisms, so that's seven individual uh, unique spiritual baptisms. And then you get water baptisms. It's not only the one that I spoke to you about when as believers we get baptized into water. There's others also. The first one is called the divers or different baptisms of the law. In the Old Testament, the, there was baptisms, there was washings. For instance, the priest would be ceremonially washed and baptized before entering the priesthood. The different baptisms of the Old Testament. Two is the traditional baptisms of the Jews. You see, I told you last week that um, in the Old Testament there are laws. Not only Ten Commandments, but there's a lot more. Do you know how many laws there were? 613 laws that God gave the Jews. You know what the Jews went and done over the next generation? They added another thousand laws to that. Talk about an overkill. So they went and added their own laws to God's laws. And this is the traditional baptisms of the Jews. This is what happens in the Bible when the Jews or the religious leaders accuse Jesus and his disciples of not washing their hands. Do you remember that story? And then uh, this was not a command of God, this was the traditional command of the Jews. Jesus says to him, you are listening to and obeying the traditions of men more than the commandments of God. So these are those, these are baptisms but not commanded by God. Uh, three is John's baptism, we know that one in the Gospels. John went to the Jordan River and uh, Jews came to him and he physically put them into the water and he baptized them into water, a real traditional ordinance of water baptism. Um, and then you get the baptism of Christ by John. This is the same mode of operation because Jesus was also baptized in water, but the purpose was different. When John baptized, he baptized for remission of sin. Jesus was sinless. He didn't have to be baptized. He was baptized for a completely different purpose. To fulfill all righteousness. That's what the Bible says. And then we get number five, which is a Pentecostal water baptism. This was the apostles. They took John's baptism and they continued to do that. The only benefit of this one was the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they baptized with water and after that the believers would then be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So there we go, 12 different unique and individual baptisms in the Bible. And this is a problem when we get to this verse in Ephesians. It says there is one body and one spirit just as we are called to one hope when you were called Verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Everybody say one baptism. One God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Verse 5 says there's how many baptisms? It can't be, Ram, there's 12. You just saw the verses, we can look those 12 different baptisms up. So, so Paul must be wrong. No, 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 no. Paul says there's only one. So the question for you and me today to answer is, which one? Which one of those is the baptism which Paul speaks about in Ephesians? Last week also said that the instruction for the body of Christ is found alone in the letters of Paul. So this is Paul's instruction to you today. In the church there is one baptism. Before this message is over you have to know exactly what that baptism is. And to do that you have to look through the Bible. So let's start in the Old Testament. Baptism in the Old Testament. Let's read a verse from Hebrews. Hebrews is a book that Paul wrote to the Jews. And in this verse he talks about uh, Old Testament teaching. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. And he mentions the different uh, teachings of the Old Testament, of the doctrines of what? Baptism, of laying of hands, of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. So there he talks about doctrines of baptism. So, as I said, uh, baptism was not an, an, uh, a new innovation in the New Testament. Just because we read the word baptism in the New Testament does not mean that there were not baptisms in the Old Testament. They just weren't called baptisms. They were called washings or cleansing. We see this, for instance, in the priest. Before the priest could enter the priesthood, he was baptized, ceremonially cleansed. This is why Jesus was uh, baptized by John the Baptist. When he was baptized, he was fulfilling his role as our great high priest. And for him to be priest, he must first be ceremonially washed. And this is what happened in the Old Testament. And when John came preaching, this is what he said. So I'm going to show you that. 
in, in John 1, it says this, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they asked him, John, and they said to him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? When they came to John the Baptist in the New Testament, they did not ask him, What are you doing? If this was a new thing, they would have said, John, what is this? What, what are you doing? What is this like water washing of people? They didn't ask him what, they asked him why. That's very, very important. They said, John, we understand what you're doing. You're baptizing. We've been doing this for 1,500 years. My question, John, is why are you doing this? You are not the Christ, the Messiah. You are not Elijah or the prophet. Capilator's prophet is probably Moses. You are not one of the Old Testament prophets. So why? Are you baptizing? We know from that verse that baptism was already inaugurated in the Old Testament as washing. So let's look at the next one. Baptism in the Gospels. Let's read the verse from Mark 1. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins was directly related to water baptism. Many people don't get that. Christians today will say, no, I've been baptized with water and I'm doing it just to show my faith. That's not what water baptism is. Water baptism is for the repentance and remission of sins only. If you were baptized with water, your sins were forgiven. They were directly related. And we cannot separate those two. When John came and he said, I am baptizing with water, that's what he meant. And then the question is, why was he baptized? He was baptizing to fulfill an Old Testament covenant that God made. In Exodus 19. Remember Exodus 19 is when God started the covenant with the Jews. This is the Old Testament. This is the start of it. And this is what he says. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, covenant, this is the Israelites, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of what? Priests and a holy nation. In the Old Testament only the priests were baptized before entering into the priesthood. Now John was coming to the New Testament and he was opening baptism up to all the Jews. He was saying, all of you are going to become a holy nation, a holy priesthood. And before you enter the kingdom of God, you have to be baptized with water. That is what John was doing. He was baptizing all the Jews as a prerequisite for them entering the kingdom of God, which John the Baptist spoke about. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. The apostles and Jesus said, the kingdom is near, the kingdom is at hand. Before the kingdom came, all the Jews had to be ceremonially baptized with water before they could enter into the kingdom. That was the baptism in the Gospels. And then what John also said, he said, I baptize with water, but there is one coming who will baptize you with the what? With the Spirit and with fire. He says, right now I'm baptizing all of you guys with water and it's because the kingdom's coming. This is what we've got to do. You guys will become a nation of peace. But he said, after me will come someone that will baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. That was not part of John's dealings. This came in the Acts. So let's look at baptism in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we see baptism taking place. And this is already commissioned by God. The apostles already were baptized, even during the Gospel. It's interesting. When you read the Gospels, it says that the disciples were baptizing, but Jesus himself never baptized anybody. I find that interesting, that he himself never baptized, but his apostles did. Before Jesus ascended up to heaven, he gave the commission to the disciples and told them this, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He gives that same commission in Mark 16, when he says, go out and preach the gospel to all the nations, that they may believe and be baptized to be saved. Again, he brings salvation to water baptism. And this continued right through Acts. In Acts 2 we see Peter. And this is what he says. Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you see there again? Be baptized with water. Why? Because of salvation. For the forgiveness of sins. And then he adds on this blessing, this, this benefit, this bonus. And he says, if you get baptized with water for the remission of sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this was spirit baptism. This is when the Holy Spirit would come and fall upon the believers and they would be endowed with amazing powers. Heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. They, they would do all these miracles that God promised them that they would do as, as preaching the, the gospel. They had to, to prove that they were of God. And these miracles was proof of the authentication 
of them being of God. This was the spirit baptism. And this is what took place in Acts chapter 2. They were baptized with water for remission of sins. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them. It's interesting. If you look through the, the, the book of Acts. In Acts 10, there's also two baptisms. Water and spirit. But the order is reversed. What happens is believers are baptized with the spirit. And they start speaking in tongues. And even Peter is confused. Peter looks at him and says, oh, this is like weird, that shouldn't be happening, it should first be water and then the Spirit. But in this regard, they first got the baptism of the Spirit. And then Peter actually goes like an afterthought and says, oh, well, we better baptize these guys with water. And then he baptizes them with water. So it's interesting, look at the Gospels, water baptism. Acts 2, water baptism, and then the Spirit baptism. In Acts 10, it's first the Spirit baptism. And then water. And it's important to see that. Because we see how God reveals his revelation of baptism through the Bible. And we've got to keep note of his changes. And this is one of those changes. The apostles go out and preach the gospel. They say the kingdom's at hand. Repent of your sins. Be baptized and receive Jesus Christ as your Messiah. They go out doing miracles to prove that they are of God and, and that Jesus sent them. And the Jews rejected it. They rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They rejected the gift of the Holy Spirit by killing the apostles and they rejected the kingdom. They wanted nothing to do with it. And because of that, God suspends his dealings with the Jews. And he says, I'm no longer going to be dealing with you guys. You have rejected me, so I'm going to put you aside. He raises up the apostle Paul and in Acts 13, he sends Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles and he sends him with the gospel of Jesus to the rest of the world. And it's in those letters of Paul where we see another commission of baptism being given. Baptism in the letters of Paul. Paul speaks about baptism eight times. Eight times Paul speaks about baptism. Once, only once, he speaks about water baptism. Only once. This is what he said. 1 Corinthians. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Christus and Gaius. No one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. For Christ did not send me to baptize. That's in stark contrast to what John the Baptist and the Apostle said. John the Baptist said, I have been sent to baptize with water. The Apostles, yes, Jesus gave them the command to go and baptize all the nations. He have four comes and says, that's not my commission. God never told me to baptize anybody with anything. And he says he did baptize a few, but he's actually regretting that too. He says, oh, thank God I didn't do any more. I just, those few people. Because God did not send me to baptize with water. And it's interesting, if you look at all the 14 letters in the New Testament that Paul wrote, there's not one word of instruction regarding the practice of water baptism, the hows and whys we should do it. Nothing, completely silent. In the other seven references that Paul references to baptism, he speaks about a spiritual baptism. And we read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, I do see some people feverishly trying to take notes. What I do have that I'll give you afterwards is um, all the scripture readings that we've mentioned. Because I've actually done this uh, preempting load shedding, which didn't happen, thank God. But I, I preempted that there would be load shedding here today. It was plain. So I, I put all the... the or all what we're speaking about on a thing for you. So if you want to collect this afterwards, please go ahead. What we do is we see Paul uh, talking about one baptism, and this is a spiritual baptism. Um, and he says, For we are all baptized by one spirit, as though to form one body, the body of Christ, the spiritual church, you and I, where the Jews are Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. In all of these other seven references, in the instructions to the church, he talks about one baptism, a spiritual baptism. And he says, this is it. That we are all baptized by one spirit into the body of Christ. Now let me take you quickly back to Acts 2. This is not the same spirit baptism that took place in Acts 2. In Acts 2, Jesus Christ was the baptizer. And he was baptizing people with the Holy Spirit. If you read this, 
That's not what it says. This is the opposite. Paul's spiritual baptism means the Holy Spirit is the baptizer. Did you get that? And he is baptizing you and I into Jesus, the body of Christ. Completely different, completely separate. They are not to be confused and they are not to stated in the same sentence. Paul only speaks of one baptism in Ephesians. This is the one baptism. There is only one baptism. What I want to do is show you a chart. I've got this also chart for you so you can look at it. And as I said before, look at the progression of baptism through the Bible. In the Gospels it was water baptism. And then in Acts 2 it was water baptism with the bonus of the Holy Spirit. Water Spirit. In Acts 10 something changes. It becomes Spirit baptism and then water. And then in Paul's it, only Spirit. Water baptism falls away. So the first question that you have to answer is should we practice water baptism in the church today? Based on the fact that Paul was not sent to baptize, there's no instruction in his letters regarding the practice of water baptism. But it's safe to assume, publicly speaking, that water baptism is not a practice for the church today. The second one is Ephesians 4. Wait a minute, there's 12. What is the one baptism? The one baptism is the one in 1 Corinthians. For we are all baptized by one spirit into the one body of Christ. And that spiritual baptism, as I said, is not to be confused with Acts 2. You get many Christians today that will come and say they've been baptized with the spirit. They're talking about Acts 2. They're talking about a spirit baptism. And they cannot claim that baptism and claim the one Corinthians baptism. Because there's only one baptism. So Christians in the church have to choose which baptism is for the church today. And without a doubt, there can only be the one that Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians. That we are baptized by one spirit into the one body of Christ. And now you know the doctrine of baptism. You know not only the A and the B of the, of the Bible, but also you know the A, B, C's of the Bible. Amen.